Court remarks from Coach Loxley, and then um, have any questions for Coach. We have a microphone for you guys just raise your hand, and we'll get you the mic before we uh, ask your questions. Coach. Sure, again, thanks for uh, coming out and joining us today. Uh, the start of spring ball is always exciting, um, exciting time uh, for us, uh, for our players. They just completed uh, our Turk Time program, which is the toughest part of our developmental uh, part of our program. It's where we focus on getting bigger, stronger, faster. Uh, and now we progress into the area where we work on the concepts. Uh, spring ball gives us 15 opportunities to master the concepts on offense, defense, special teams as well as for us as coaches to work on fundamentals uh, that we found after studying ourselves from a year ago, uh, the things we need to work to improve ourselves individually where we feel when you get better individually, you get better collectively. But last but not least, it also gives us an opportunity as coaches to start identifying the guys that we feel will become playmakers for us uh, during our 22 season. Um, for our coaches, this is a great time uh, to work on addressing the different areas, you know, at the end of every season, we go through and quality control every aspect of our program um, from a football standpoint. And we look, we look to improve whether it's going to meet with other staffs. You know, I know our offensive staff spent time with the Philadelphia Eagles this past uh, off season. I know our defensive staff had a host of different uh, coaches come in and clinic. And so uh, you'll see us integrate new things into how we uh, do business here. Um, from a schedule standpoint, we'll practice on Tuesday, Thursday, Saturdays, with Saturday traditionally being uh, scrimmage opportunities for our team. You know, going into this season, you know, one of the things that really jumped out to me um, up in New York at the Pinstripe Bowl was how much fun it looked like our team had playing in that game. Uh, as I, you know, look back at how that game took place and, and, and tried to assess what was the difference, because I did see a difference in that game. But I really felt the connection with our team. And I think that was a byproduct of us having to be forced to spend time together up in New York, still going through the pandemic uh, criteria that were placed upon us. But our team really, really did a great job of, uh, as I say, connecting with each other. I saw groups of players that traditionally didn't necessarily hang with each other spending quality time. And so we're trying to carry that over into the 22 season where we're, you know, the big emphasis for us is to be connected uh, as well as committed. And for me, those are the two things that for us to take the next step as a program, which uh, our, our goal is to take that next step, it'll definitely be a, a byproduct of how, kinetic, how connected and how committed we are as a program. Um, we have a great deal of talent on this roster. Uh, we embrace any expectations that we've created for ourselves. Um, if we remain kinetic, kinetic, connected and committed, you know, I'm sure we'll continue to take the next step. And I still believe that the best is ahead for our program. And so with that, I'll open it up to questions. Questions? Okay, Mike, to you. So Bruce here, Coach, uh, in late January, there was a lot of discussion about the breakup of divisions in the Big Ten uh, for 2023 because of the playoff system to get more teams involved. Has there been more progression talk about that? And how do you feel about that? Yeah, you know, as coaches, uh, again, those things are, are above my pay grade um, in terms of how this thing is broken up and we'll, we'll deal with the hand that's dealt with us. Uh, we always try to focus on the things we have control. If you'd like to hear my opinion, I definitely think um, that there would, there would be some benefits of us uh, breaking up our conferences and how they're set up. Um, the goal is to always uh, put the Big Ten in the best possible position um, to have teams get into the playoffs. Uh, I think that when you look at the way our divisions are set up, um, both sides have their issues. But if you look at the Big Ten East, there's no doubt in my mind that it's one of the toughest uh, divisions in college, all of college football. And I've had a chance as a coach to be in some pretty tough divisions. and. I do think it would be beneficial for our conference. But again, um, Commissioner Warren and the powers that be will figure that piece out and we'll continue to deal with whatever schedule is placed upon us. Hi, I'm Maryland wide receiver Rakim Jarrett. If you've been hurt in a car crash, people will tell you you need a lawyer. My mom says you need my lawyer, the Jack Litch Law Group. Find out why clients, judges, and other lawyers call us the big dogs from the small firm.
and why we've been named the best personal injury trial law firm in the entire country, as well as why the Daily Record, Maryland's legal newspaper, has named the Jacklitz Law Group the very best, best personal injury trial firm and best civil litigation firm in the entire state. Every single lawyer at the Jacklitz Law Group was honored by best lawyers in America. Hiring the Jacklitz Law Group was the best decision anyone in my family has ever made, other than my decision to play football at the University of Maryland. At 855-BIG-DOG-1. Don't just get a lawyer. Get, get the, the lawyers. lawyers. If you're hurt, listen to my mom and bite back with the big dog. Hey, Coach. Uh, how's everything going? What's up, Ryan? Long time no see. <laughs> Good to see you. Yeah. Uh, my, my question is kind of a two-parter. It's been a while since we, we discussed, and I was wondering, back in February, could you uh, share your thoughts on what happened with your whole Kevin Steele situation in terms of, like, basically what happened where initially he was supposed to be the D.C., and then there was things changed? And my second question is, what made you feel Brian Williams is the guy the job you know when you ask me two questions I kind of forget the first one so <laughs> I'll start with the one that most kind of sits in my mind uh, Brian Williams and him as our defensive coordinator um, I don't think it's a secret that going into the Rutgers game a year ago which was a winners take all game for us we made a decision or I made a decision uh, to make Brian Williams our primary play caller for that game I thought it was necessary after coming out of the Michigan game where I didn't think we played very well uh, on, on, on in either of the phases, but I did think that um, a change was needed at that point in our season, and so we made the decision and uh, we stuck with it for the last two games. And I think those last two games turned out pretty well for Turk for the Turk family. And Brian has done a tremendous job. He's earned the respect of uh, his the coaching staff. He's earned the respect of the players on that side of the ball. Uh, he's a guy that really has. Uh, continued to grow within our program and did a tremendous job in the Rutgers and Virginia Tech game, which to me earned him the right to have an opportunity. He was already the co-coordinator. I'd been in that situation before at Alabama as a co-coordinator under Brian Dable uh, to kind of understand how, uh, how it kind of flows, um, have the utmost confidence in him. And, you know, as far as the hiring uh, of, of a prior defensive coordinator, I mean, again, like any part of our program, People that aren't here don't concern me. Um, why they aren't here doesn't concern me. Um, I'll focus on the ones that are here, and we feel really excited about uh, Brian Williams, the job he did to end the season as our primary play caller on defense, and I expect him to continue to grow and do a tremendous job in that role. Hey, hey coach. Um, and kind of building man? off that, um, obviously Brian, Brian Williams is a guy that came over when you first came over as head coach, and I know this offseason as well, Mike Miller was a guy that came over as well, promoted on a co office coordinator. Um, so I guess when you kind of look at the year four and you see that, you know, the guys that you, some of the guys that you brought in day one are, you know, continuing to grow, continuing to build, um, does that kind of leave any, you know, added reassurance going into year four into you? I mean, the added reassurance is that the systems that we run, the one thing I did take away from the time I spent down in Tuscaloosa is people come and go, the systems don't. Um, you can add to the pot can't take out of the pot and you know both those guys both Mike Miller and, and Brian Williams have tremendously continued to grow in the roles they are I mean a guy like Mike Miller had opportunities this year to leave and to coordinate because of some of the things we do on offense so uh, my goal as the head coach is to continue to put the, the coaches and the players in my program in the positions to reach the goals that they want to achieve and I think both those guys are, and they're not young as much as I always like to say young coaches because they're, they're definitely not young guys anymore, but both very capable. Um, and so really excited about Brian, really excited the way Mike has continued to grow and has been an integral part in what we do on offense as well. I'm Wayne Viner from Viner Four Gates. We make your company work. I'm Arthur Smith with Viner Four Gates. Two-factor authentication is a must-have in today's world. Security training for your company is a must. The crooks are getting smarter. We have to give you the edge to fight back. Sorry to keep it on the same topic, but I was just curious with Brian, you know, players speak really highly of him. He's known as a really great recruiter. What do you see from him on that side of things in terms of why he's able to connect with players and, and be so good in that area? Well, I've said this before. If people 
like you, they buy from you. And, you know, B-Dub, as we affectionately call him, is a guy that tells the truth. Um, he doesn't sugarcoat it. I think there's still a bunch of 18-year-olds that appreciate being told the truth. Um, and he's one of those guys that's a truth teller. Um, he cares, really cares about the players that come under his uh, tutelage. I know he invests a lot of time into his players and just like raising kids, you gotta put time into them. And so I see the extra things that he does to try to develop meaningful relationships that aren't just gonna be about the next four years for these guys, but the next 40. And so I think uh, that lends itself to why he's had great success recruiting as well as uh, developing the relationships necessary. What's up, Alex? Right in this thing? All right. Sure. Yeah. Uh, you know, you talked about that bowl win and, and how players, maybe you saw players talking to each other that, that normally wouldn't interact. Do you feel like this team going into this spring has a little bit of a different swag to them that they've had in the past year now that they've tasted a little bit of what they really can accomplish in the postseason and what you guys hope to accomplish going forward? You know, I think the validation of, of what they've been able to accomplish uh, going to a bowl game, winning a bowl game will lend itself to our guys wanting more. Um, to me, that's what the, the evolution of what this program should look like, taking the necessary steps, and we always talk about it. And you know, I know for you guys, you want to really squeeze me into defining what the next step is, but I think our players truly understand that for us, uh, a bowl win for the first time since 2010, uh, being able to win two meaningful games, you know, the Rutgers game uh, was a, a big game for our program and a big step in the right direction for us and how we prepared and how we, you know, we battled. You know, we dealt with COVID issues during that time, just like everybody else. Uh, but the players continued to come in, put the work in. And so I do think that having that experience will uh, enable us now to, it, it kind of enables us as coaches to show this is why we do what we do and how we do it. So I've seen our players really embrace that piece of it. Um, the off season program, we always say it's great. Um, but it's really been the best turf time program that we've had since I've been here because you have guys now that have done it for the fourth time in their careers and they really understand what the, the, the dedication and the work you put in now and how it benefits you down the road. And so hopefully we'll be able to build on that. Hey, Coach, great to see you. Jacob, what's up, man? Not too much. It's a little cold, though. Uh, a little chilly. A little chilly. Um, but my question was, uh, you know, you have another really experienced group of receivers this year. Uh, what does it mean to have Coach Brewer, you know, being that, uh, you know? You know, it's an interesting story because uh, Gunner was the guy that I originally tried to hire when I first came in and thought we, were, we would be able to get it done. He was just leaving Philadelphia and took a job in Louisville had some family issues going on at that time. And so um, it's amazing how timing works, uh, but he arrived at the right time for us. We've got a group of receivers that have been battle tested. Um, there's still room for them to improve in the fundamentals of that position. He's got a talented room as they continue to work to get healthy. Um, there's no doubt that he's added so much to that room, to our offensive room as well with his experience and having coached at all the different levels, uh, his development of wide receivers. Uh, and in this system, um, it is a receiver-friendly system. And I think Gunner's addition to our staff has really been beneficial for all of us, including our receiver room. Second one, Mike, good to see you. Good to see you. Been on? Yep. Um, you know, in talking to a lot of fans, some who have been more invested in the program than they are now, liking to see the ramp up. And obviously, you see growth under your, you know, since you've gotten here in the era but they're waiting to see competitive games against the better teams in the Big Ten before they feel reinvested. How close are you to that? Yeah, um, I'll let those guys answer it. I mean, for us, we're, we're, we're doing the things necessary. Uh, we all want to be competitive in each and every game. I don't think there's a game that we show up for that we say, hey, let's not show up for this one and save it for the next one. So I would hope that our fans understand the development necessary and that you know, their investment is just as important as our investment. And to wait to come back to, to reinvest in our program when we get competitive, by that time the bandwagon will be full. So we need them to come get on now and help us build this thing. Uh, can't do it alone. It's not something that, you know, I can say that's all on my show. It's on all of us as a, a Turk nation. 
to get behind the football program uh, in this day and age of NIL and transfer portal. And, you know, it really challenges the masses of the universities that they support to really show up because uh, right now the, the college landscape, the, the way college football is going, our fans and our supporters are really, really important to our development. Hey, Lauren. I just wanted to ask, you talked about during the recruiting cycle and um, when you got all the signees about how you thought this class could really be the DNA of your program. With some of those early enrollees, have you been able to see that at all kind of start to develop and what are you kind of liking out of that? Yeah, you know what I have because, you know, the, the toughest thing to do as an early enrollee is to come into this part of our program because I've seen where this, this, this is the toughest part of our developmental stages and you know I saw guys like Jay Sean Barham and Andre Roy and, and, and Caleb Wheatland and a host of these guys really just fight through it and uh, there's no doubt this class that we signed um, as I said a lot of them were captains a lot of them were leaders on their respective teams a lot of them come from championship caliber programs where they've won they're used to winning and that just adds to the necessary culture that we're going to need to have in that locker room to, to continue to take the next step and build our program. And there's no doubt the, the early enrollees that have showed up here uh, late January have really put in a lot of work. They've kept their mouth shut. They haven't come in and tried to you know, do a bunch of talking. Um, they all have really bought into you know, the, the locker room that we've established already, but you can tell that these guys have some natural leadership skills that, that will benefit us in the long run. What's up, Scott? You you talk, kind of touched on it, but you know you're known as a big time recruiter. You know throughout your career, um, you know getting to starting to dig in here with a 23 class. But you know obviously it's very early. But how have you seen the NIL kind of changing things as you recruit kids? You know especially with you see some schools now you got these 503 C's being started by boosters and you know ex players and things like that. So how has that kind of changed things for you going forward? Well, uh, it goes back to, I guess, one of the earlier questions I was asked where, you know, when our supporters want to see us become competitive in those games. Well, I like to see us become competitive in the NIL game as supporters as well. And that's not to say that we don't have that, but I do think when you look at the landscape of the way college football is moving, and I'm not one to cry about it. I mean, these kids deserve and earn the right to be able to go where they want to go, when they want to go, how they want to go. They've earned the right to uh, command, you know, monetary um, things for their name, image, and likeness. And so that's the hand we're being dealt. Um, I think it's going to take us as a, a, a program uh, outside of just the, the athletic department for us to, you know, support the program in a way that allows us to, to go out and, and attract the right kind of kids to build championship level programs. Um, I think there's been a call, and I'm excited. Uh, the way that things are working for us, I, I've got a lot of faith in Turk Nation that they will continue to support our programs, all of our athletic programs. Um, I know, you know my boss, Damon Evans, and Colleen Sorum are working diligently to put things in place to continue to allow us to be competitive uh, in the landscape that we've been given. But, I do know this, we've got a lot of really good players in this DMV area within a 20 minute drive that um, that care about the, the pride of being from this area like I do. And we'll be able to attract the right kind of kids to come here, stay here, develop here. Hey Coach, uh, with this being your fourth year, are there any differences that you feel that this team will have compared to the previous ones and uh, similar to that? Um, with the bowl win, do you feel as if they now have added confidence that they can take that next step? Yeah, I, I, I definitely think um, going to a bowl, uh, to me, it enables our players, they have an understanding now of, you know, you can talk about getting bowl eligible and getting to a bowl and what the benefits of going to a bowl does for your program. Those 14 or 15 practice opportunities that we had leading up to Virginia Tech, I mean, you can't put a price tag on how valuable they've been to our program. I definitely feel like the players in our program now haven't seen what it's like. And I can tell you, again, you know, kudos to the Pinstripe Bowl. Um, 
they did a tremendous job of uh, putting on a, a great bowl game. Our players uh, really enjoyed themselves up in New York City. I know that our fans had an opportunity to come up and be a part of it as well. And so uh, definitely um, helps with the development of our program because it gives them a taste of what it's like. And like anybody that has that opportunity to really uh, get a feel for what going to a bowl game is like, you, you want to take the next step. You understand what the process is like to get there. And, and it's great to have been able to show them by actually going there and, and winning one. Two quick ones. Uh -oh, here we okay. go. What's up, Emily? Um, just because it hasn't been directly referenced, I was just curious if Damian Robinson's departure came as a surprise and, and if it's difficult for the program when a highly touted guy kind of leaves under. Um, no, it didn't come as a surprise. Um, you know, as I've said before, we have to recruit our current roster, we have to recruit sophomores, juniors, and seniors. Um, we're recruiting all the time. and. We hate to see players go, leave our program. But as I've said before, this is the landscape of college football. The transfer portal giveth and it taketh away. I'm sure we'll have, we'll, we'll, we'll enjoy the fruits of the transfer portal during my time here. Uh, you never like to see, a, a, see good players go, but these guys have earned the right to do what they want to do. I think the disappointing thing is, is that um, they're not always going for the right reason. And I'm not speaking on any specific person when I say that. Um, and it's it makes it a little tougher in the recruiting world. But as I said, the landscape of the way college football is going, I mean, it's free agency. Every I mean, We'll benefit from the transfer portal. Um, we, we, won't, you know, we won't just get our stuff taken. We'll be okay. And then two guys who are here, uh, Jay Sean Jones and Dante Dimas. I know there's no reason to rush, but what, what do you think they might be able to do in terms of practice this year? You know, they both have uh, taken part in, in, in bits and pieces of our uh, turf time program. So it was great to see those guys out there and moving around. Um, how much and how available they'll be this spring is a day-to-day -day process for us. You know, every we meet and we practice on Tuesday, Thursdays. The medical people will tell us what they can and can't do. And, you know, we'll continue to follow the, the, the lead of uh, our medical people with how they are coming along. Time for two more. Hey, Coach, when you got here, you started to send out, or the team did, messages that had a TBIA uh, attached, which is the best is ahead. People wondered what that was about. I'm wondering where did that come from, and how do you measure up to the, the best is ahead? Are you on track with where you thought you'd be? Um, I definitely feel like we're on track. Um, the TBIA acronym came from my late great friend Trevor Moad, who served as an advisor to me over the last, since I've come to Maryland and then prior to that, my relationship with him, uh, working with us at Alabama, you know, Trevor passed a year ago, um, you know, from cancer. And, and Trevor was an awesome, awesome uh, voice uh, for me. He was a guy that I could lean on um, in terms of mental creating mental edges for your teams and definitely have played a role in where this program is so you know the best is ahead you know, Trevor would always say that to me when I hung up with him uh, about our program but it's something that he used quite a bit and you know kind of stuck with me because as you build sometimes you can't see the forest through the trees and you know if I sit and listen to everything that you guys write and say I kind of get overwhelmed and so as long as you keep your eyes on the prize that we're working for toward a goal, which to me is to put Maryland back in the landscape of college football as a, a, a program that, that when they show up, they're going to show up. And that's the goal. And uh, we've got the type of players in our program, the type of coaches, the type of support that we're taking the next step and we do feel our best is ahead. Yeah, Mike, and it's funny, we kind of go through this, we haven't talked about a quarterback uh, at this point, but having you know, Leah back again and we're a third year now under you and seeing his progression, I think I have to imagine part of your confidence and believing the next step is coming right here is having, you know what you're getting there and also how high his ceiling may be. Yeah, we do. And, and again, I'm going to go on the record and say our quarterback played one bad, one bad quarter through five interceptions in one quarter. And prior to that one quarter and after that one quarter, he played big-time football for us. 
and for him not to get the respect that the top quarterbacks in this country or in this league get, uh, it's disappointing. But it's not our job to prove people wrong. It's our job to prove ourselves right. And there's no doubt in my mind that Talia Tungavailoa uh, is one of the better quarterbacks in college football. And our Turp Nation should be really excited to know that we've got a guy returning that has the skill set he has, that has done some of the things, some of the records he broke. Um, there's no doubt that I've got a lot of faith in him, and our team has a lot of faith in him. Thank you, Coach. Appreciate it. Thank you very much.